All right, in this series of videos, we are going to create a web application from scratch using only the Java programming language. No HTML, no JavaScript at all. Yeah, we will have to touch a little bit of XML and maybe configuration files, but it's super easy to understand. And so here's the plan. So first, we are going to create a new project from scratch again. Then we're going to implement authentication and authorization using Spring Security. We are going to implement a CRUD view, that is um, create, read, update, and delete uh, with database connectivity. We are going to then add a form that has collaborative features and it's going to be really, really interesting. Then we're going to add a view to show a report that you can export to, for example, PDF or uh, common separated values and many other formats, actually. And then the icing on the cake for this project is to add um, cookie consent dialog. And that's very, very easy to do with Vadin. So let's start with the first step, setting up the project. All right, so I'm going to use IntelliJ IDEA for this project. And let's just go ahead and create a new one using the Spring Initializer. I'm going to leave all these as, as it is. I'm just going to change here to um, Java 17. Next, we are going to use Spring Boot Dev Tools, Lumbug, so that we don't have to code uh, getters, setters, and all that. Uh, we're going to use Spring Security here. Uh, of course, we are going to use my favorite uh, web framework for Java, which is Vadin, and we are going to use Spring Data JPA, and let's use also my favorite uh, database, MariaDB. Finish, and let me show you what we have here by default. So we have a bunch of files here that we are not interested in, uh, but the important part is that you get the source here with just one Java class which has a public static void main. This is kind of the entry point of a Java standard Java application, and in this case, it's a Spring Boot application. But before we continue, let me add some other dependencies that I need for this project. So I'm going to go to vadin.com slash directory, which is a place where you can find third-party uh, components for Vadin. And uh, I promised I would create a um, CRUD view, right? And so there is a there is a component that um, allows you to do that very very easily. CRUD UI add-on, which I created uh, some years ago. So let's copy first the repository, the Maven repository, and let's add it. Um, I don't think there is a repositories section, so we need to add that here. And let's add the repository there. Now let's copy the uh, dependency. I'm going to add it just right after Vadin Spring Boot Starter. Uh, what else do we need to do here? I think that's it. So we also need um, an add-on to create, to easily create reports later in a, in a later video. So let's copy the dependency and added here. We don't need to copy the repository because it's the same. But we are going to also use the collaboration engine from Vadin, which I think I can find here. Let's copy this, added. Another thing I want to do is to use maybe the latest version of Vadin. So let's check that here, releases. And so it's at 21.06 as of today. Uh, let me click over here. And also maybe the collaboration engine, uh, let's use the latest version. Uh, here it is. There we go. We refresh the Maven project so that the ID knows which dependencies it should use. And I think this should be ready. Okay, now let's configure a couple of things here. So in the application.properties file, we need to configure the database um, connection. So that would be uh, spring data source data source URL. And okay, so for the URL, let's create a new connection here inside my IDE uh, MariaDB. And I have one server 
running already. I think my user is root. Let's use root. Don't do this uh, in production, of course. And I think my password is password. Um, succeeded. All right. So yeah, it's working. Apply. Let's copy this URL. And that's what we are going to use uh, right here. Now, maybe I should create um, a schema here. So let's create a new schema, which is kind of a database inside MariaDB. Let's call these books. OK, so we should have it there. And there are no tables, but uh, JPA is going to create that slash books. We need to specify the name of the database and the connection URL. Now let's go ahead and use uh, con or configure the username and the password password and then another thing that I'd like to do is, is to configure DDL auto from um, hibernate to let's use update here so it creates the databases or the objects in the in the database another thing I want to do it's uh, adding a specific adding white listed packages that's going to be um, useful for um, or, or makes uh, the compilation much much quicker so we're going to add this package over here, com example demo. And this could be a list of packages separated by a comma or by uh, commas. So we need to add also com.vadin because we need uh, anything that comes from those packages, anything that is related to vadin, we should add it here. Or .vadin because there are add ons, and if you add, you have your own uh, add ons and you add here more packages. Uh, Always uh, remember to do that. I hope I didn't make any mistakes here, but I think we'll get an error if I if I don't do this correctly. So let's double check com example demo com .vadin org .vadin. I think that should be uh, all right. I guess we have configured the the project now. All right. So now that we have the application ready and configured, we can create a backend. So we're going to add an entity, a repository, and a service class that the UI can use to retrieve data, to write data, to update data, whatever it needs to do with the database. Okay. So we need two packages here. Let's create one for the backend, and we will need another one um, for later for the UI just so you get the idea of what the structure, what the structure of the project is. And let's start by creating a new Java class called book. And book is going to be um, an entity or a Java object that encapsulates, uh, you guessed it, information about books, private long ID, private string title, private, uh, let's add maybe a local date for published when the book was published private uh, let's create an integer for the rating of this book how good the book is I think that should be it and since we are using um, Lombok I can just add data here maybe actually we need an all or no args constructor and um, let's be explicit here all args constructor and also the equals and hash code, I really want it to be only on um, on the ID. So I'm going to include the ID. And we now have a POYO, right? Plain old Java object that we can map to a table in the database. So let's use JPA for that entity. And because it's an entity, it needs an ID. And we are going to generate this value using the strategy um, identity. So it's going to have one, two, three, four, five, and so forth for the um, IDs. We don't need to specify the IDs now. Um, I guess that's it. Now we have everything. So just to to, to show you what, what we have actually is uh, all the setters and getters. And we have uh, con two constructors and equals and um, hash code using the id field here okay very good we have that class ready now let's create a new book repository 
This is very easy to do. Repository. This is actually optional, but I like to be explicit there. And it's not a class, it's an interface. We're going to extend JPA repository from uh, Spring Data. And it's a repository of books which have IDs of type long. And just with that, we have now a bunch of very useful methods to interact with the database, like count, delete, find all, save, and so forth. Uh, we didn't need to implement this again. We can just inject instances of this uh, type and a Spring, uh, a Spring uh, Framework is going to create them automatically for us and Spring Data is going to implement the class or the interface. All right, so we have the, the uh, repository, but it would be good to have also a book service that the UI can use. And here I do need to specify service. And let's, let's extend one of the uh, classes that are provided um, by the crude UI add-on, which is curt listener. And it's a curt listener of books. You'll see uh, why later in the video, but this also allows me to quickly implement these methods over here. So first of all, these are books. So I'm going to just change this to book. And we probably need, it's not extends, it's actually implements. It's, it's an interface. I can show you the interface here. Very simple one. But we need, we probably need the, uh, the book repository, right? Let's call this repository. And let's use Lombok here to have um, required arts constructors. We have, I can show you that too. We have this constructor, we don't have to implement it. And Spring is going to inject an instance of this type. So this is not null anymore and we can use it. Repository dot find all repository dot save book. And in fact, update is exactly the same. And here repository dot delete book. And I guess that's about it. We have the service class implemented. And in fact, we have the whole backend implemented now. So this is step three of the tutorial where we are going to implement authentication and authorization using Spring Security. So this means creating a login screen uh, with username and password and then uh, securing views so that only uh, users with a determined um, role can access these views, all right? So let's just jump into the code. So let's configure Spring uh, security here. And since Vadin 21, I believe, there is um, a helper class that allows us to configure that very, very easily. And it's called Vadin Web Security Configurer Adapter. So we have to extend that class. And uh, we need to override. We need to override a couple of things here. So the first one is configure with the HTTP security object here. And what we're going to do here is set a login view that we're going to create in a moment. So let's call that login view dot class. It doesn't exist, but we're going to create it in a moment. Then we need to override also uh, the user. Uh, user detail service bin method to create some users so we can play with something, right? And this is a bin, so I need to uh, mark it as a bin here. And instead of returning this, we're going to return a new in memory user details manager uh, that receives, uh, for example, an array of user details objects. And one way to create those is, let me format this like that is by using the uh, user uh, uh, class over here and then configure this. For example, with username, let's create one for me, Alejandro. Um, password is going to be password and this is going to be encrypted or it's going to use an encoder. So we're going to use one that it's no operation. Um, this is the easiest way to do it, just to specify this here. Don't do that at home <laughs> uh, or at least not in production use a proper encoder, password encoder. Mm. Then we can also specify the list of roles. We're going to use only one role in this example application, admin. 
And after that, we can just build the object. So this is the builder pattern. And we can create another one, separated by a comma here, because it's an array of objects for, let's say, Maria. And uh, you know what? Let's change this only to the letter P, so that it's easier to type later when I'm using the app in the browser. Um, OK, so we have configured the um, uh, web security using Spring Security. Now we just need to create this class, and it is extremely, extremely simple. Let's create this in the UI package because it's uh, um, a view. So it's going to go here. There it is. And this, of course, is a valid view, so it requires a route, for example, logging. It could be anything, really. This is so that we go to slash logging, and then we'll see this, this view that we are going to implement here. And here's the first trick of this tutorial. It's very easy to implement this, actually, uh, by extending um, composite of login overlay. And then here in the constructor, what we can do is, uh, let me say first this related problem here, what is going on. Maybe it requires the import. It's not that. Let's read the message. Uh, how can I read the message? Oh, yeah, I forgot something here. So I wasn't uh, paying attention to the parameters. I need to pass the HTTP object as well. All right, now it's compiling. Very good. And back to the login view. All we need to do here is get the content, which is this login overlay, it's going to return an object of, of that type, and then set opened true because it's an overlay, right? It's going to be on top of the screen. So we need to open it and then set action logging. So it's going to use a slash logging using the post, um, uh, using post instead of, of, uh, of get. So it's not going, going to clash with this, right? And spring. Security is going to manage that authentication uh, for us. We really don't need to do anything else here. It's um, very little code, and we get a logging view. Um, now, we probably need a couple of views to check that the uh, uh, authentication and authorization is working. So let's create first a home view route empty, so a slash empty, nothing, because if it's a home view, <laughs> so it makes sense, vertical layout, let's use vertical layout here, and oops, where did it go, let me see, uh, here it is, a constructor, where we are going to simply, for now, let's just add a new h1 component, so a new um, title, home view, Let's format this uh, like that so we can add more things easier later, right? Um, and we need to say, hey, this is for everybody. You need to have a user registered in this. You need to be Alejandro or Maria, <laughs> which are the users we created, in order to see this view. So we mark this with anonymous allowed. And uh, now we can check that part. And let's create another view, admin view. Route slash admin, again extends vertical layout, and let's create something similar here, so add, let's add a new h1 admin view. We need to specify the, the roles, so roles allowed from this package, admin, because all, all uppercase because that's what we use in the configuration here for these two users, all right? Very good. So we have, I guess, something we can try. The first time you, uh, if you are following this, you are trying this uh, by yourself. The first time you run this application takes a bit longer than subsequent runs, but uh, mm, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a lot of time though. Let's see how it goes this time. Uh, the reason is because it has to download all the Maven dependencies, which maybe in my case I 
maybe I had those already. Uh, but it also has to build um, the front end and download the uh, client side uh, dependencies. So that's what this is uh, doing right now. That's what front end compilation means. And once we get it uh, ready, we should be able to see the application here, home view, so it works. But if I go to admin, we should see the login form. There we go. So we didn't code this thing and it shows the login form uh, uh, automatically, which is so cool. So let's try with my username here. The password was just one letter login. And now I can see the admin view as well. All right, so we are on step four of the tutorial where we are going to create a CRUD. CRUD means create, read, update, and delete. So it's gonna be a view with all these operations. And this view is going to connect to the MariaDB database to um, allow the user to create new books or to edit the books or delete the book and, and so forth. So um, let's jump right into the code. Okay, so this is the admin view, right? The one that it's uh, used by users with the role admin. So it's protected, let's say, by um, Spring Security. And now we want to create this CRUD. So we're gonna add it here, CRUD. And that that is, let's create it here. And you grid CRUD, which comes from the, from the add-on CRUD, CRUD UI. And you need to specify here the uh, the type. It's a crud of um, books, so that's what we specify here. And believe it or, or or not, only with that we have the user interface for a um, crud view. So let's check that out. There we go. So we have uh, the options to add a new book. We have a grid or a table. It's called grid in Vadin with all the books and one column per property in the in the um, book class, and we can add new books here. Of course, it doesn't really work yet. It doesn't really save the item, as it says there, because uh, it's not connected to the back end. So how can we do that? Uh, that's pretty simple. So we need to add here, or be actually before that, I just noticed that we have the ID here, and maybe this is not in the best order possible, the columns, and the same for the um, the form. So let's, let's configure that, and that's very easy to do. So we can just get the grid, which is a, a, a voting component, right? And we can set the columns using the names of the properties in the domain object or domain class, which is book. So we're gonna use title, published, and rating. Title published rating and now it's going to show only those columns there and for the uh, form to configure the form we need to get the um, CRUD form factory and again set visible properties it's going to be the same I want to use exactly the same so let's just copy from there to avoid typos I hope I didn't make any typos um, let's try that out actually before continuing to see that mm, the UI looks the way we want. Title, published, rating, that's good. Now we don't have the ID here and, and we only have these three fields. All right, very good. So let's connect that to the backend and the backend is book service. Let's call it service here. And if you have a look at this, constructors, there's one that accepts a CRUD form sorry, um, CRUD listener. And remember that we did that before in the previous video? CRUD listener, we implemented that. That means that to connect this to the backend, all we have to do is pass the service class there. And that should be it, really. So we should be able to save um, data using this view. So let's try that out. Let's add my recent book, Practical Vadin, published. It's very recent, I think it's just some months ago, a couple of months ago. I'm gonna give it a rating of 10 out of 10 to this book. <laughs> add, there we go, we have it there. Let's add another one. Whatever, published, I don't know, another year just for fun. And uh, any number here. 
add. So this is actually in the database and we can check that. Let me just refresh this maybe. And we have the book table. This is an SQL client and you see that inside the database, you have the two rows in this table. Pretty cool, huh? Um, yeah, so that's how you can implement um, a CRUD using Vadin. So we are now on step five of this tutorial where we are going to create a form with collaborative features. That is, we're going to allow the users to see what the other users are doing in real time. That's pretty cool, very easy to do actually with Vadin. So let's jump right into the code. So let's say we don't want this option here. They want to create a new um, book. We don't want it here in this screen. We want to redirect to another uh, view and make that collaborative. How can we do that? First, we need to hide this option, but that's very simple. If we go to the code admin view where I have the grid CRUD, we can just say crud.set add operation visible false. So it's not gonna show that. And instead we want to get the um, CRUD layout, which is the organic kind of the um, the component that contains all these other components and the arrangement there. Uh, and we're gonna add a toolbar component. A toolbar component is something shown next to these buttons here. And we can add just a new uh, router link, which accepts text first new book, and then we can pass a component. So let's say this is new view.class, which doesn't exist, but again, we can just create it there in the same package. So it's right here, new view. Let's map this to new, so a slash new again. Instead of component, we're gonna use vertical layout, and just to quickly check that this works, let's add a title here, new H1, new book. Let's compile this and we should get a link here that goes to the new book. But I want to show you something as well. So new book, it says, could not navigate to new, recent access denied. So that's important, security is, is working. <laughs> Um, roles allowed, we need to allow the group of admin users here, right? So now I should be able to go there, very good. So we have that in place. Now we want to create this form from scratch. Let's create all the fields, the input fields here, private text field. So one for the title, title, private, uh, what else was there? Let me actually refresh my memory. Uh, title published and rating. So this would be a date picker for published. New date picker. And we need one uh, integer field or the rating. Something important is that the names of the identifiers here match the exact name of the properties in the book class because we are going to do some data binding here. But for that, let's add those um, those fields to the vertical layout, but I'm not gonna add them directly there. I'm gonna create first a form layout and then we can add the title, published and rating components here course we need to separate these guys from with or with a comma we probably also need uh, the uh, title before the form so let's change the position of that and we will need a new button to save uh, to save the, the changes um, let's check that the UI looks the way we want there we go so you have all the components here. This is a date picker. And the cool thing about the, oh, where is it? Form layout is that it's responsive. So for example, if I make this window narrow, you see how it changes. So this may be 
would be how the application would be presented in a mobile device. And you can configure the, the, the number of columns here. It's called steps or responsive steps and several other things in this form layout if you want. Um, okay, so if we click this, it doesn't work. So we need to first bind the values in these input fields to an instance of book, right? So to, to the corresponding properties in an object of this type. How to do that? Actually, it's pretty simple. We need a new binder here. And binder is a helper class. It's not a UI component, it's just a helper class. And we specify the uh, bin type, which is book dot class. Scroll this binder. Mm, and now we say bind instance fields. And we pass this instance. So this means bind the instance fields, which are these, or of this class, which are these, or object, to the corresponding getters and setters in the book, because we have it here, right? In the book class or object that we are going to create later. Um, that's it. So it's with this, it creates automatically create the bindings. What, what it means in practice, that means that when when we change the value here in the browser, when we change this value, it's going to be reflected in the title property of the book uh, object. Same with published and rating, but we need to we need to actually tell it to do so, uh, and we want to do that when we click or when the user clicks the button, which is. This, this is a click listener. I'll show you here the um, constructor. It's an event listener and it's a click event. So when we click the button, we get here and we need to, we need to uh, create a new book somehow, right? Because we need to save it to, to, to the database. So this is the book, but we need to set the values. And instead of using like uh, set title and then title.getValue and so forth, because what if the form is huge? Instead of that, we use the binder. And we can read the bin or we can write the bin also if, if valid. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail of the if valid part. There is something called, there is something called um, validators that we're not going to cover here. But uh, if it's valid, just write the bin. Which bin? This. So it's going to, because we have already configured the uh, connections, let's say the bindings, it's going to use those connections or bindings to write the values here, or actually here, to this instance. And then, then we can use the service, which we don't have here, by the way. Let's get the book service injected. Service dot save. I think it's add actually the book we are adding a new book then we can show a notification um, that says for example book saved and if you think about it when we are adding things here we click the button it gets saved but this information remains there we maybe want to clear that correct so we can we can set a new bin there, new book, or we can actually, for example, use um, read read bin, which is uh, maybe it's easier to understand because I'm using write bin here. So the read bin is the opposite. So read this bin, read the values there in these properties, and set them in the corresponding fields that we already. Uh, configured here as the bindings so that should clear the form if I didn't make any mistakes and should add um, the books uh, to the database let's see if that's true or not let's create this book very original name creative any number there save book saved 
it's cleared. Let's go to the admin view. It is there, so it is in the database. Very good, so it, it actually uh, worked. Uh, nothing surprising here, but what it's crazy, it's how easy it is to make it collaborative, I'll show you. Instead of using a binder, we're gonna use collaboration binder. And this requires the bin type, but also a new object, which is uh, uh, an object of type user info. I'm gonna call it user info, so, so it's easier to understand. It doesn't exist yet, so let's create a new user info. And it needs a user ID at least, but we're gonna use also the name because we want to show the name uh, on the screen. So let's use, for both, we're gonna use the same, it's the user name, user name that, that we uh, configured it already. Um, in the Spring security configuration, right? It's the username. So we have two there. Uh, but how can we get that? Well, we have to use security, context holder, get context, get authentication, get principal. And because we were using this method, this builder, we know we are created user details objects. So that's what we need here. Var uh, user details. And of course, um, let's do this. Let's use this user details. We need to be explicit here. Of course, we need to cast that user details dot get username, assign that to username and now we have the object, very good. So th these are the changes required by this constructor. Um, now you can see that this is deprecated, read bin is de deprecated here. Uh, but it's clear in the documentation that you have to use set topic instead. So let's start by exploring set topic. So we need to set a topic, what is a topic? It's kind of a chat room, if you wish. So all the people are gonna be here. This So this screen needs a name, right? Like this instance of this screen needs a name. So let's say this is a new book. Any identifier uh, should work. And then we need a supplier of books, which can be implemented like this, new book. So of course, a little bit more complex than the standard binder because you can uh, imagine that it requires a bit of help to make it uh, collaborative. And now let's, let's fix this. And the cool thing is that there's a reset method here and we can just pass a new instance of book. So it clears the, um, the form after we save a book. And so if it worked, if, it, if I didn't make any mistakes, let's go to this screen. And I probably need to open another one here. So let's do the following. Um, let's bring it like over here and this like that. And let's use, let's use the other user here, Maria. Login. And it was an admin, it was actually a new book. And you can see that as, as Maria is editing this, Alejandro can see what Maria is doing. So I don't know which book I was in, but um, but we can see that Maria is doing that, all right? Rating and so forth. Save. The same for Maria. She would be able to see what uh, any other user is actually doing here. So that's, that's pretty impressive, right? Now, let's say that we want the users also to chat here on this screen because they need to work together. That's also very easy to do uh, with, with the VAT and collaboration en engine. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna change the layout. Let's create some space here so you get the, the idea of what I'm using or what I'm doing. So let's create a horizontal layout here and 
Mm, uh, what can we do? Let's create two vertical layouts. Vertical layout. New vertical layout. So, so now we'll have like, well, we have the title and then we have this horizontal layout. We're gonna move the other code later in a moment. But we have a horizontal layout that's like having two, like the screen divided in two. Let's go here. Like this screen is gonna be divided in two. And on the left, I want maybe um, the uh, form. So I can just move this over here. And on the left, we want to implement a chat, all right? How to do that? We need two, two new components here. The first one is new collaboration message list. And let's see what this requires. It requires the user info that we have already. And it requires the topic ID, which also we have new book. You should maybe uh, create a constant for that, but let's leave it as is. Why? Because it's here, right? So we don't need, we don't want to have it uh, twice. Maybe we, we could introduce a typo and it won't work. All right, and the other thing you need, this collaboration messages list is where all the, the messages are gonna appear. And we need also a new collaboration message input. And that needs the least. So we need to extract these to a new variable. Let's call it just message list. And since this is so clear here, we can use var. Message list. Let's compile that. I think uh, that's it. Let's see if it works. All right, so let's use uh, Alejandro here let's use maria here and now they should see each other's work right but let's say uh, i'm creating a new book i don't know which layer i was but let's say it's uh, e and uh, i'm editing stuff here whatever and then maria comes to the screen and, s and sees that i'm creating this um this book right and so she says hello Alejandro which I reply hello Maria and then she noticed something's wrong uh, I see that you are creating the new book you are missing an E in the title and so I see this and I go oh yes I'm missing one yeah yeah thanks I go and fix it save it and everybody is happy now uh, so that's how easy it is to add collaboration capabilities using Vadin all right so we have arrived to step number six which is the last step of this tutorial where we are going to implement a view to show our report that you can export to pdf or comma separated values excel word you name it um, also we are going to add a cookie consent dialogue at the very end of the video that's super super simple to do so um, make sure not, not to miss out on that part All right, so let's create a new view. Let me close all these files. A new view called report view. This is mapped to slash report and it extends. Vertical layout is fine. Now we need a constructor here and we're gonna add some components. Mm, a new title. Actually, maybe we don't need the title here. You'll see why in a moment. Um, but by the way, what we need is to specify the roles allowed admin. Very good. So now Alejandro and Maria can access this view. Um, very good. So we need to create a report. Here's how, you, how to do it. It's also very, very simple. So 
let's create a new print preview report of books and this uh, class comes from the report UI component in the Vadin directory and then we can specify the columns that we want to show there the col columns are actually the properties the name of the properties here so let's say we are not interested for example in showing the ID but only these three title published and rating so we can do that title published and rating this is a report mm. and uh, it doesn't show any data right we need to connect it or we need to set the data there and for that we need the back end which is the book service this is how we access uh, the back end now um, report has a method called set items and we can pass here all the items so service dot find all so we want a report with all the um, um, all the books now this is failing because I'm returning a collection here but I know I can return a list instead and it should work um, list so now it should compile now with this actually we should get the report when we go to slash report let's check that that's true and we don't need two windows here anymore let's go to the report view and it's loading I guess the stuff there we go so we have all the books that we have created before that come from a database and you can configure these um, reports you can add uh, charts you can um, uh, add sub reports you can use uh, Jasper reports to do it this is uh, using um, an API co called uh, dynamic Jasper so for example um, let's say we want to um, I don't know um, set the title books so with that and there, there are many other options there with uh, dynamic Jasper but I'm not gonna go through through that but if you now oh I didn't add the title for some reason maybe I didn't compile I think I, I actually compiled uh, but let's see there might be a bug maybe uh, maybe I should restart the application let's try that and if if that doesn't work then we can just continue uh, but let's see so uh, this is part of the Jasper re dynamic Jasper um, API let's see I hope it works uh, okay it's not it's not really working for some reason uh, this set title uh, method here I wonder if it's uh, if it's a um, bug or, or what's going on anyway <laughs> I think I'm gonna leave it like that uh, if you find the solution to this please let me know in the comments section um, but it's how easy to add a report now let's say we want to export this to PDF for example that's also very easy to do so we need to call report dot get stream resource and the file name is going to be let's say report dot or books books dot pdf then we need to specify a supplier of books and that is service dot find all but we can use a method reference here so it looks nicer and uh, we need to specify the format and there are many many formats format PDF CSV docx etc so let's use PDF here and let's call this PDF all right uh, in fact we could do the same for example for comma separated values I'm copy pasting the code here but 
I guess you can imagine how how to do it, for example, by iterate, iterating over all the values, right? All the values of format, and then creating all the formats uh, if you want, or create a method that you just specify the format and it creates uh, the rest automatically. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it like this, just yes. um, because this is a demo, I guess. And here we have we have a vertical layout, so maybe let's create a new horizontal layout, which is kind of a, a toolbar, if you wish, with all the the buttons for exporting the uh, um, the uh, their report. And here we need to create new anchors. So this accepts um, an abstract stream resource, which is what we got there. So for example, for PDF, it was called PDF. This one. Maybe it's not it's not it's not a good idea to use var here, by the way, because you don't know where it is, right? So it's probably it's better to to leave it like that. Yeah, much better. Um, and then you can specify a text so PDF. And the same for CSV. CSV here also. Mm, we need to separate these. Um, with comments and I guess I guess that's all you need to do to export let's see if it works so PDF okay I need to authenticate PDF now the browser opens uh, the PDF but you can of course save it and comma separated value we can open it outside the browser. Let's see if it contains all the information. There we go, all the books are there. Oh, for some reason, the title is here. So you know what I think it's happening here. It was a cache issue from the browser because now we have it here. <laughs> all right, there wasn't any bug there. That's good to hear. And uh, there you go. Uh, that's how you can create um, a report. But I promise I would add some something special here very quickly remember the home view which is public this one here and before anything else I'm gonna actually remove any any uh, cookies here just in case I have used this before but here's the the, uh, the home view and we want to add a cookie consent dialog which is required in, in some uh, places for example here in Europe and with that, it's so easy to do. So cookie, consent, compile. That's really it. New cookie consent, and you get it here automatically. And it says this website uses cookies to ensure you get the best experience. A link to more information. Got it. Now I can use the app um, and deploy it legally <laughs> just by adding one line of code.